Today we're gonna make a classic scotch cocktail, the blood and sand. For this drink, you're gonna need a Nick and Nora glass, a jigger, a citrus juicer, a Hawthorne strainer, a fine mesh strainer, a cocktail shaker, and a cutting board and a small knife. This drink uses scotch, cherry herring, freshly squeezed orange juice, sweet vermouth, and an orange peel for garnish. This is one of the better known scotch cocktails. It was named after the 1922 Valentino film, Blood and Sand. It was originally made with equal parts. This is the more modern recipe that's found in vintage spirits and forgotten cocktails by Ted Haig. Especially with this recipe, the scotch you use has a big impact on the flavor of the drink. Blended scotch is the more common option, but blended scotch is cut with grain alcohol, essentially vodka, which thins out the flavor without sacrificing potency. So a lot of times, a blended scotch can get lost in the flavors of this drink. Although it's a blended scotch, Famous Grouse is a good option and commonly used in this cocktail. However, I'd recommend using Black Grouse, which has a spicier, smokier, bolder flavor than the more famous of the grouses. But for the best results, I like using a pure malt, or vatted malt, which is a blend of single malts, but without the vodka. With its accents of pepper and peat, Johnny Walker Green Label is great in this drink, although it's pricey and harder to come by. And since we're already speaking heresy, you could even try using a boldly flavored single malt, but don't tell anyone I told you that. Also, the drink is sweet enough already, so I'd suggest steering toward a scotch with more of an emphasis on the smoky flavors. You still want the flavors of the scotch to shine through, but be complemented by the other ingredients. A scotch that's heavy on the fruit and vanilla is great on its own, but it'll get lost in the crowd of this cocktail. Use your favorite sweet vermouth. I really like Carpano Antica. It works best in the modern recipe. In the equal parts classic recipe, it tends to overpower the drink. Cherry herring is the most consistent of all the ingredients. People like using different scotches, vermouths, and even types of oranges, but most people use cherry herring for this drink, despite the fact that the Savoy cocktail manual calls for cherry brandy. But cherry herring has become the standard. It's a bottle that's worth having on hand, in case the mood seizes you and you need to make blood and sand. I like squeezing, straining, and bottling the orange juice before I start. That way it's ready to go, and I can measure precise pours. We'll start by chilling the glass, fill it with ice and water, and set it aside. Next we're going to measure an ounce of scotch, add that to the shaker, measure an ounce of orange juice, add that to the shaker, measure three quarter ounce of cherry airy, add that to the shaker, measure three quarter ounce of sweet vermouth, and add that to the shaker, add ice, and because we're using cloudy ingredients, we're going to shake this one. Give it a good hard shake to chill it down and give it some dilution. Dump the ice from your Nick and Nora glass and strain the contents of your shaker into your chilled cocktail glass. Do not double strain this one. The bruising, the little layer of ice chips, and the sea foam head on the drink as part of the aesthetic. Cut a fat swath of orange peel, being careful not to cut into the white pith. Express the oils of your orange peel over the drink, rub it along the rim of your glass, and drop it in for garnish. And there you have it, the blood and sand. Enjoy. Click here for more videos. Be sure to subscribe and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.